So in the first video, I established the foundation. In this video, I'm going to begin to build on that foundation. I'll be starting with the scroll work at the bottom. Now this can be used in a number of other applications, such as on the side of a vehicle, a marine shoulder pad, anywhere you want that added little bit of extra detail. Obviously in close connection with that, we've got the, uh, the script that goes onto the scroll. This could be used not just in connection with the scroll, it could be done on its own. And what I'll be doing is showing you how to plan out that before you commit it to the miniature, or in this case, the banner. After that, I will be doing the pile of skulls that go in behind the scroll. Now, it's worth noting that at no point will I be painting an entire skull. It's parts of skulls in order to give the illusion of there being a pile. And obviously, you could apply this to a number of other things, such as a free hand of a, of a crowd, for example. So hopefully this will all be helpful. And let's get on to some painting, shall we? So starting with shield brown and a very thin consistency, I sketch out the two end parts of the front section of the scroll. Just by doing two straight lines down. I then put the centre guiding point slightly lower. So this will be the top of the centre of the scroll and then join those lines up in a nice smooth line. Obviously it goes without saying you need to be very careful here. I try to minimise any mistakes to save you any unnecessary cleanup. Once that's done, I then make another mark in the centre. However, this is slightly lower than before in order to give me the bottom line of the front part of that scroll. I join the dot up with the two end parts and then begin to fill in the shape created. So now that's done, we need to start to sketch out the folds at the two ends. So the easiest way to do this is to draw the line of the top edge when dealing with the folds that are going up and draw the line at the bottom edge of only the folds that go downwards. It's worth mentioning at this stage that every single layer of paint that I use when painting freehand is pretty much a glazed consistency to some extent. Some are maybe a little bit more thinned than others, but they're all very, very thin. There's a principle of you can always add more, but you can never take it away. So as you see here, again, I'm sketching out these folds by starting with that top edge. It just makes life a lot easier. And then once you've done that top edge, you can fill in the rest.
so then as I mentioned earlier when doing the ones that spiral downwards you start with the bottom edge rather than the top and then fill in so it's it's literally a mirror image of what you were doing at the top and then just simply repeat the other side So now we've got a base coated shape, I need to start to define the scroll. So I begin by adding a small amount of linen white to my base colour of shield brown and then glazing in the definition shapes. So obviously you need to leave the base coat colour in the very deep recesses of those folds, otherwise you, you won't define that fold at all. So you can see that's already starting to take shape, albeit in a very subtle way. So right here I am taking a little bit of wood stain brown, really really thin down, and just putting it into the recesses of those, those folds just to accentuate them a little bit at this stage. and then we rinse and repeat for the other side. Exactly the same. I'm actually doing the wood stain brown here at the moment. Now I'm going to do a 50-50 mix of linen white and shield brown and just begin to highlight those very upper edges of the scroll to really start to establish the definition of those folds and at this point you can really start to see this scroll take shape. This is actually a great way to show how when doing freehand sometimes the general shape that you've base coated may be not looking particularly as though you think it will be but then at a certain stage it all of a sudden comes into life and your mental image is realized in front of you. I hope that if people take only one thing away from this video it is that you need a certain amount of patience when doing freehand and that knowledge that at some point if you stay the course the thing will just pop into life.
So now we've got the edge highlights done to a certain degree at this stage. I'm going to add a little bit more shield brown to the mix and then glaze in the those highlights to, to just get a nice smooth blend between the extremely bright highlight and the, the considerably darker body of the scroll. It is worth noting that you're not losing the definition of the scroll, you're just making the, the blends a lot nicer. So now I'm going to start to define the shadow around the base of the scroll by adding a little bit of red shadow into the sections around the base of the scroll whether it intersects the red and then we're going back in with the same glaze as before just adding a little bit more color to the scroll in general So now I want to begin to define the scroll further. I've added a lot more linen white to the mix and begin by applying the edge highlight to the top folds. I'm also going to begin glazing this particular mix into the more raised parts of the folds to really push that 3D effect. Now with pure linen white, I'm gonna to begin to really push the edge highlights. And again, with an even further thinned down version of the same glaze, I begin to feather that highlight back into the scroll to just smooth it out. As the center of the scroll has not really received much of any attention so far in this, I want to start pushing that and adding a lot more color into it by subsequent glazes of lighter and lighter paint. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, I 
start doing the entire scroll and then eventually we'll do 75% leaving the bottom 25% and then reducing that so that the lighter colors are towards the top of the scroll. So at this stage, I'm beginning to apply a extreme highlight of linen white, but at the same time, applying an extreme shade of wood stained brown into the deep recesses. You'll, you'll see how that then makes those folds pop. And this is very much a back and forth between the two just to really get that definition nice and crisp on those folds. So now I'm glazing in the final highlight to the main body, followed then by some interesting little tears using wood stain brown. This is obviously just personal preference. I like to do it because it gives a little bit of point of interest. So now that's done, I go in with the final highlight, concentrating on the extreme upper edges of the scroll and the folds and around those new tears that have been created. But I also will feather in a much thinner glaze of the linen white into the actual body of the scroll in the upper parts of it, just to make it a slight bit lighter and make it a little bit more 3D. So I would usually print out the, the script in a font that I find appealing, but unfortunately my printer was out of ink. What I do is I take that piece of paper, whether it's printed or written by hand, put it next to the thing I'm about to paint on, just so that I've got the correct spacing for the, the script that's going on there. Now, when I'm painting this, I'm using extremely thin down black paint and being very, very careful. However, even though I do that, sometimes you may get a line that's maybe slightly bit thicker than you would like. And in which case, just go back in with a tiny amount of the, the base coat colour for, for the scroll in this case. And just thin that line out a little bit.
as I mentioned earlier about mistakes at this point here I was not happy with the the, the D and the the E and the M so I took a little bit of the scroll colour painted over what I've done to essentially erase and then reapply the script Now with a skull pile I'll be painting each skull individually as I mentioned at the beginning of the video but it's worth noting that I'll be using a khaki colour as my base coat colour rather than the brown just to establish a difference in the two beige bone type colours that the scroll and the skulls are made up of. If you did them the same colour they would obviously blend in together and be a a, a massive blob of beige and nobody wants that so I've merely done a base coat color and then put the eye sockets in and you'll notice that I've not actually painted the full skull just the given the impression of a skull in order to highlight I'm merely adding a tiny little bit of linen white to the base coat color with each layer and then just building the color up it's also worth noting that I won't take these skulls up to the, the final highlight at this stage. I'll wait until all the skulls are done before doing that. Now adding in the second skull which is sort of sat behind the one we've done already and a little bit lower. So you're only getting half of the eye sockets and the very top of the cranium. And it's also at a slightly different angle so it's looking almost the other way whereas the other one was looking at us and you don't want to have them all orientated towards the same direction otherwise it will just look bizarre then in with the next one so this one's sitting a little bit higher and again it's going to be in a different orientation to before Although personally I have a, a decent mental recollection of skulls and the way they are because I was doing so many at so many different angles it was just so much simpler to have on my PC screen a picture from a tattoo book of lots of different orientations of skulls so that you, you've got that, that source reference right there in front of you. So this skull here is going to form the edge of the pile and as such I'm maybe paying a little bit more attention to it than, than the others and you're obviously seeing a lot more of it as well.
it's also worth noting that there's there's no problem in painting slightly over one you've already done if you wanted to just to build up those layers So at this point, I thought that I would just sketch out where I wanted the, the Reaper's gown to be, just so I had an idea of the, the angle of the skull pile. This is just very very thin down black and just giving a, a general idea I'm not making up a solid color then once that's done we start doing the skulls again and of course now we've got that perfect shape for which to build up the, the skull pile angle
if I was to paint this again I probably would do the the bottom of that, that gown that shape before I started the skulls it's not made any difference in this particular instance but it would just make life a tiny little bit easier
So now all the scales are done, I'm going to start just putting the, the final white highlights in. So that's really beginning to take shape now. We've got the scroll and the skulls done, which are essentially establishing that base for the, the Reaper to stand on. And that is the focal point of this banner, and which will be the subject matter of the next video. So until that time, you take care and happy painting.